Listen to understand and not respond with this video, please, man. I got a lot of motherfucking requests on this one. Got a lot of supporters who's DMing me or hitting me in the comments on other videos, asking me to speak on this Montana 300 because uh, they know, you know, I've done other videos about the early Chicago rap scene in like 2011 and 12 and 13 and 14 th and things like that. They wanted my opinion on what Montana 300 was saying on Twitter, you know what I'm saying, which made it to Instagram, made it to the blogs, hit every big blog who follow that Chicago rap scene of fans, which a lot of us are of this, that early drill music. Now, I'm going to just throw these up and put the information out there with my voice, and I'm going to try to give niggas a little lesson and understanding on this video and teach niggas a thing or two. So basically what happened with this story was, Montana 300 came out basically bragging on his rap ability in Chicago and how he was, you know, the top rapper and he felt that he was slept on basically, which he's been saying for years. He got more bars than niggas and this would be his last album because of everything going on. He was going to wait till after Corona and everything like that. So the Corona shit was over. So with him saying all those things about how niggas in Chicago wasn't really fucking with him on the music side and things of that nature, King Vaughn responded first from what I seen. He's one of the early responders and he basically called out Montana like, hey nigga, who know you from 300? If you don't know what 300 is, that's the hood, that's the section that they, you know, that really blew Chicago up. That's where niggas came from. That's what niggas was repping. Lil Reese, Chief Keith. Uh, got there, Fredo Santana, rest in peace, and all the other legendary niggas. Lil Dirk was 300, 600, all that going on. They all family. Southside Chicago. So, early on, Montana 300 was never stamped as part of the 300 movement, but he had 300 on his name. So, a lot of people accused him of wave riding and trying to latch on to that whole movement. He said his 300 meant something different. His 300 was no surrender, no retreat, basically from the movie. So they like, nah, nigga, you're trying to ride the wave of what we established in Chicago with our, you know, lifestyle, our culture, and everything we stand on. That don't apply to you, though. So if you paid attention to the sounds of the music, he always rapped different. He always sounded different. He always had a different flow than everybody. And, and you know, he's actually said that he's from the South side of Chicago, but as well as a suburb that's like an hour away from Chicago called P Ryan, if I'm not mistaken, or, uh, Perry. Uh, I can't, I can't exactly remember what it's called. Not P Ryan. Uh, fuck. I forgot the name of it, but he said he grew up playing sports, but he would be back and forth from there out of uh, Chicago, which was like an hour away. So basically, he never really was stamped as a 300 artist, but this nigga can rap his ass off. He can spit, he got the metaphors, the similes, the enthrottas, everything, man. The wordplay, he got it. But he wasn't really, he didn't come in the game just making original songs. He was doing a lot of freestyles over beats, going on them on some like, basically mixtape Wayne shit going harder on them lyrically than a lot of rappers. But understand, the thing is with that, with the music, that's what I want to put in this video that, hey, bro, it ain't always based on how good you can rap. You got to understand that sometimes people fuck with people for the personality and off based off the energy they put on the track, whether it's lyrical or not, people adapt to it. People are not just going to music for lyrics anymore. They're not going because they feel like you got the, the best metaphors and bars. Niggas want complete songs. Niggas want hooks. Niggas want a vibe. Niggas want to turn up. And that Chicago culture, they gave us a vibe of, hey, you know, your early Chief Keeps, your Fredos, your Lil Durks. Even to this day, Lil Durk is killing. You know, you might get out rap them bar for bar, but you got to be able to make songs. Montana, you got to understand, man. And this is me, too. I'm not being honest because I fuck with Montana as a rapper. You know what I'm saying? The fans decide what is hot. If the fans wanted you hot, they would have catapulted you there. I just got to be honest. You could get millions of views and views, but, hey, if it's meant for you to break into this game, you're going to break into it. You know what I'm saying? 
Ain't nobody out there being able to stop you from getting a record deal, but you got to get out a hit song. You got to make a song a hit, whether whatever you got to do, even if you got to pay the DJs to play it and pay for a feature, get an artist on it. You know what I'm saying? That is hot to get noticed and get them on the video. You got to do those things, man. It is what it is. You can't just sit back, well, hey, I rap better than niggas and everybody should be fucking with me. Nah, you got to invest. It's not one thing you got to do to be a successful rapper anymore you got to do like a hundred things now i'm not saying that montana 300 is not getting money but he clearly wants the recognition for being the hottest artist out of chicago and being the best lyricist out of chicago he's saying hey line me up with these niggas i'm gonna get them any one of them but you gotta understand nigga the the, the rappers in chicago that are hot as far as rappers and street rappers like yourself they're not battle rapping them niggas is getting on that whole drilling, talking fly shit, and making vibes at this point. Making vibe music, you know what I'm saying? Swagging on beats, whatever. They're not going out there trying to be the best metaphor or, or, or lyrical rapper or anything like that. They trying to make hits and feed the family. You got to do the same. You got to go in there and try to craft hits, you know what I'm saying? Mind you, Montana is a little bit older than a lot of these guys. You know what I'm saying? Most of these guys are 26, 27 and under. Or, or 27 and under, 26, 25, all the way down to your ages of 20, 18, 19. You know, he's a little bit older. I think he's like early 30. So that plays a little bit of role. And understand that, you know, like I say, Montana's a good artist, but they don't care about who has the best lyrical rap. You know, Lil' Reese spoke out on it. Tay 600. Lil' Reese was just like, hey, man, stay humble, nigga. you like, we we not trying to come out there and be the best rapper. Ain't none of that best rapper shit. We all talented with this shit. We all doing our motherfucking thing. We all making good music, creating vibes. You know what I'm saying? And, to, and we all know Chicago is one of the most talented cities and, and sections in this rap game right now. So shout out to the whole shot rack, man. Montana 300. Just keep putting out your music. Tay 600. Do your thing. Re East 300, everybody keep putting out their music and repping Chicago. And you got to look at the new wave now. You got your Polo G, you know what I'm saying, killing it, man. And he's not coming out sounding like even Chief Keith. That's the whole new wave of Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Your Juice Worlds and Rest in Peace Juice Worlds and other things coming out of Chicago right now. So subscribe to the channel, Urban Politics TV, man, 1000.